Many battles have faded into history, waiting to be uncovered. The Yontan airfield raid was a desperate attempt to change the course of the war. By the end of 1944, Japanese air attacks proved ineffective against United States Army Air Forces B-29 bases, leading to the creation of the Kichiretsu Airborne Unit. The unit assembled experts in sabotage and demolition to carry out a mission to destroy the B-29s and damage their bases. Special weapons were developed for the mission, including a pole charge with a suction cup and a 15-foot chain charge to separate the wing from the fuselage. The commandos went through intense, almost ninja-like, training and were expected to destroy at least two aircraft each. Preparations were made for an attack on the B-29 Saipan bases, but it was cancelled due to American attacks on the refueling fields on Iwo Jima. Plans for an attack on the Iwo Jima airfields were also cancelled. After US forces landed on Okinawa, the Japanese began a series of massive airstrikes with kamikaze aircraft. Yontan Airfield on Okinawa became a significant staging area for U.S. interceptors, which took a large toll on the kamikaze attackers in massed attacks. On May 15, 1945, the Japanese 6th Air Army requested the use of the Jiretsu Commando Unit to neutralize the Americans' Okinawa airbases. The commandos moved to Kengun Airfield on Kyushu in preparation for Operation GI. The Imperial Japanese Army deployed special Tishin units led by Lieutenant General Kyoji Tamanaga, increasingly relying on suicidal tactics. A series of raids on U.S. airbases on Leyte in the Philippines during November and December 1944 heralded this desperate new measure to counter ever-growing Allied air superiority. The paratroopers were carried by transport aircraft to the target airfields, either parachuting in or crash landing onto the American airbase. Their tactics were straightforward, destroy or damage as many American aircraft and supplies as possible, and then hold the position to the last man. These initial attacks were directed at Bury, San Pablo, Dulag and Tacloban. Bury and San Pablo saw the heaviest attacks with approximately 300 Japanese paratroopers coming down in the area. Many of these parachutists jumped from too low an altitude and crashed to earth, rendered unable to put up much of a fight when U.S. Army troops and airfield security detachments arrived on the scene. At Dulag and Tacloban, the Japanese transport aircraft were shot down by anti-aircraft fire, the paratroopers aboard unable to even attempt their attacks. The Juretsu unit's organizational details included the weapons carried by each commando. In addition to the listed weapons, each commando also carried high explosive, HE, and white phosphorus, WP, grenades, as well as a pistol. In July 1945, just two months after the Juretsu raid on Yontan Field on Okinawa, the United States Military Intelligence Division produced a pamphlet titled, Japanese Parachute Troops. The following is G-2's assessment of the Japanese raider units and their weapons. Japanese paratroopers' weapons may be divided into two classes, those carried by jumping personnel, and those dropped separately by parachute. Except for minor items, it is believed that Army and Navy paratroopers will carry similar weapons and equipment. Weapons carried during the descent include the following, pistols, rifles and bayonets, submachine guns, light machine guns, grenade dischargers, rifle grenades and launchers, hand grenades, anti-tank grenades, flame throwers. While the equipment carried by each paratrooper will vary according to the mission, it is believed that the rifleman carries a rifle complete with bayonet and 120 rounds of ammunition, three hand grenades, a smoke candle, probably self-projecting or hand-thrown, binoculars, small pickaxe, shovel, and a luminous compass. The light machine gun operator carries a light machine gun, with two full magazines, bayonet, and cleaning and preserving material, and two hand grenades. 
The assistant light machine gun operator carries a pistol, 27 rounds of pistol ammunition, 180 rounds of light machine gun ammunition, a magazine loader, and three hand grenades. The grenade discharger operator, with pistol and 27 rounds of ammunition, carries the discharger, six shells, and two hand grenades. This equipment is subject to considerable variation depending on the assigned mission. Two days rations, some medical supplies, and a luminous compass are normally carried by everyone. Standard demolition charges may be carried. Signal equipment will include portable receivers and transmitters, probably constructed as transmitter receiver units. Several different types of this radio equipment have been recovered. On the evening of May 24, 1945, the Imperial Japanese Army IJA, suicide commandos conducted a raid on the large United States US, airbase at Yontan Field on Okinawa. The attack coincided with the 7th Kikusui offensive planned for the following day. Five Mitsubishi Ki-21 IIB Sally bombers, modified to carry up to 14 commandos and their equipment, were used for the raid. Approximately 50 bombers were sent in advance to draw the attention of American night fighters and anti-aircraft defenses. Out of the five modified Sally bomber transports, four were shot down by American interceptors. The remaining Sally transport approached Yontan Field at about 10.30 on the night of May 24, but American anti-aircraft positions devastated the transports, shooting down four of the five Sallies. One of the Sally transports had its wing blown off, coming down on an anti-aircraft position, while the remaining Sally belly landed on the runway and a dozen commandos emerged from the nose, attacking nearby aircraft with satchel charges and phosphorus grenades. The commandos also ignited a fuel dump containing more than 70,000 gallons of aviation gasoline, causing chaos at Yontan Field until Marine troops arrived and killed the last of the raiders.